What's up, people? I'm Shaggy, the Opinionated Hippie, and this is part three of my reviewing and ranking the Jerry Garcia live concert archival release series, uh, Garcia Live. So this is Garcia Live, volume three, and for Garcia Live, volume three, we have the Legion of Mary, uh, a band that uh, Jerry and Merle Saunders put together in the early 70s, um, and this is a three-disc set of material from two shows, uh, December 14th and December 15th in 1974, both up in the Northwest of the United States. Uh, the first show being in Oregon. Uh, they're both in Oregon. Uh, one's in Portland, one's in Eugene. Um, fantastic, fantastic stuff on here. I'm going to talk about the review, then I will show why I would put this among the other two that have been released. Um, the band is uh, Jerry, uh, Merle, uh, John Kahn on bass. John Kahn is a ridiculous bass player. Uh, the fact that Jerry was able to find two such unique and perfectly suited for him bass players in Phil Lesh and John Kahn to just be there to support him in his musical career is one of the greatest things ever. Kahn is fantastic. If you're not, if you have not fallen in love with Kahn before they even get to like the first real jam on the first song, then your bass needs to be turned up or you're not hearing the bass or something's just wrong. Um, and then Ron Tut on drums. Um, and then they have Martin Fierro on saxophone, flute, and percussion. Um, and this has a very loose, jazzy, Jerry Garcia band type vibe um, in which in almost every instance, you're going to get a Garcia solo, a Merle solo. You're going to get a Martin flute solo, maybe a lot of saxophone solos. Get some heavy flute presence later on the second show. Um, I'm, I'm assuming he's just on percussion in some of like when other people are soloing or during some of the songs. Um, eyebrows all over the place in all of these songs. Um, a number of the songs maybe feel like they're, they're songs that they do a lot. And even now at this point that Jerry would do a lot for decades to come. Um, and maybe they don't quite have that fire during like the first half of the song, uh, maybe even during the first or one or two solos, but almost at every point in every song, uh, if it, if it, if not by the middle of the solos, like you just, that fire kicks in and the, the song goes to the next level and it just everything, like the energy just really becomes like palpable. If that's not happening, there are still so many little moments, either saxophone interjections or licks by Jerry or things Merle's doing or just John Connor bass that just make every song just worth listening to just for those minor little details. Um, you got one original Merle Sanders song on here. You got no original Jerry songs on here. So a whole bunch of covers. Um, first CD is all stuff from December 14th. Probably the best two tracks are the opening songs from each of the days. Uh, December 14th opens up with an amazing boogie on Reggae Woman. Uh, the jam in that is just awesome. John Kahn is awesome. The funk, the Jerry funk of Boogie On is incredible. Um, Merle Saunders' singing voice isn't quite the greatest thing in the world. It's very much a talking to you singing type thing. Um, takes a little while to get used to, um, but once he sings, like Kahn even supporting him while they're singing is fantastic. They're just off to this awesome jam and they're just jamming this funk energy for like 18 plus minutes to open the show. Absolutely fantastic. Um, two songs are repeated on here. Both of the days have a, they, have a The Night They Drove Old Dixie Down. And apparently they were under the belief that if they played this even the slightest bit too fast, it would fall apart and not work. So they made sure they played it really, really slow. It's it's really. Virgil Kane was a man. Yeah, it's 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 a slow, it's a slow going. Um, kind of puts the brakes on the energy after the open boogie on. Uh, but then the third song is Freedom Jazz Dance, which is this awesome, has this awesome, very jazzy start stop type, uh, you know, head. And then we just go on to this crazy, awesome solo section that kind of reminds me of maybe what like a an ideal bird song from the Grateful Dead jam would sound like, where it's jazzy, it's kind of all over the place. It feels like instruments are just flying all over the place, but it's not like crazy and like a 
anxious way, but like crazy and it beautiful, everything's flying and soaring and like, it just feels like the type of jam that would fit perfectly within like a Grateful Dead Bird song, especially what they were doing in like the 80s and 90s with the MIDI sounds. Like we don't have that stuff here, but just the directions and everybody's interactions and the way we're all over the place, fantastic. Um, then we get a mystery train. Uh, Jerry sounds great. Takes about halfway through the solos before this thing catches fire. But once it catches fire, it's a strong mystery train. And then a How Sweet It Is closes out the, the first disc and the material from the first show. Second show starts on the second disc. And I think the opening track on that might be one of the best things on here. Uh, you Can Leave Your Hat On, the Randy Newman song. Um, this jam goes to Grateful Dead level places. Playing in the band, Dark Star, really deep out there, not necessarily space explorations, but we're, we're just kind of losing wherever we started. Like, where, where did we start? Who cares? We're out here in improvisation on no man's land. It is some absolutely beautiful playing. There's an incredible saxophone solo in here that kind of starts the, the whole endeavor. And then everybody gets a chance to contribute to like some weird, proggy, psyche, just awesome, very... 74 dead feel type stuff and for this 74 Legion of Mary show. Um, then we get this nice little rocker, neighbor, neighbor. Jerry's vocals on this are fantastic. Neighbor, neighbor, just yelling it out. Uh, then on disc two, uh, the third of the three songs. So we only have about, about 40 minutes of music on disc, on disc two, only 40 minutes of music. Uh, closes out with another, the night they drove old Dixie down. Uh, disc three opens up with a, It Ain't No Use, nice bluesy Jerry number. Um, this is the one song on here in which the solo section really does feel like you solo, you solo, I solo. Jerry maybe be in the eye. Um, in which there really is not that sort of like, it seems like all the rest of the solo sections, while it's definitely, hey, it's definitely a saxophonist or it's definitely Merle or it's definitely, there's that, you know, we know who the center soloist is. There's so much interplay between them at all points in time that you kind of like, there's a very organic feel to it. it. It Ain't No Use is the one that has that blues, you solo, I solo, you solo type thing about it. Great solos. Um, I'm not complaining, but that's the one that has that, the starkest division when it comes to the solos. Uh, we get a cover of Valdez in the Country. Um, no idea who wrote Valdez in the, uh, Donnie Hathaway. Oh, Donnie Hathaway's Valdez in the Country. Um, this has some Carlos Santana Sika Corbergushin energy in there. We get some maybe you want to you want to do a little dancing, a little Latin dancing in there. Got a really nice vibe in it, a really good energy. Um, yeah, very like big band jazzy type feel, even though it's not a big band, but it's got that jazzy sort of Latin feel about it that's really cool, really makes you want to move. Really good Jerry song. Uh, we get an I second that emotion, another one that Jerry would play pretty much forever. Uh, we get the Merle Saunders original Wondering Why. 25 minutes of this. Second to last song uh, for the second show. And the song reminds me of uh, the Talk Talk song. I think it's The Rainbow. Um, I think it's off Spirit of Eden, right? I think that's the lead off track off Spirit of Eden. Um, but it's this song that really just kind of is there and it kind of floats around and it's beautiful and it's haunting and it's amazing. And then every... Like I think happens three times in the rainbow, maybe four. Like everything tightens up for like 30 seconds or 45 seconds. You get this actual semblance of a real song and it's so moving and compelling and then that just falls apart. We go through this like weird ambient floating thing before things coalesce again. That's what Wondering Why is, but for like 25 minutes. It's really this like ambient jazz jam that kind of floats and people are soloing. And then every once in a while you get this like, doo -doo 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 -doo, this like tightening up of, oh, there's an actual riff or something pre-written. And we get a like maybe not even a minute, I don't think, of like an actual song before things fall apart and we kind of jazz again and go off into weird places. Um, there are moments in this song and then also moments in another, might be Valdez in the country, in which like everybody almost like checks out and things get really like the, the rhythm section calms down, the saxophone, and it's just kind of Jerry and Merle. Merle's on electric piano on this one. On the other one, it might even be Jerry and the saxophone player. No, I think it's also Jerry and electric piano on the other. Um, and Jerry's just starting to play some rhythm guitar and playing some really funky, jazzy stuff on rhythm that is fantastic. And it's almost every song has some moment where like they're interacting and Jerry's on rhythm or Merle's on rhythm or you know some the saxophone player is supporting them in some way just these awesome improv moments that just make 
almost every song a must hear in some weird way. Maybe not those that night they drove old Dixie down. So those are slow. Um, and then we close out with a road runner. So some really good energy. Um, Jerry sounds great. Like just your typical show closing rocker. Doesn't get too crazy, uh, but some really nice solid energy. It's a great lesson. It's a fun lesson. And there were, I mean, I think the boogie on reggae woman, freedom jazz dance, you can leave your hat on are almost must hears. Like those are just absolutely essential. And then there's just some really good stuff in Valdez in the country. Wondering why, maybe 10 minutes too long, but it's an interesting, indulgent listen that, that's kind of worth checking out. But yeah, I like this show. I enjoy this show. The sound sounds great. The energy is good. The band, band sounds fantastic. Where would I rank this? Among the other two I already did, I would put it there. I do have it at number two, only because I do think volume one from start to finish is just like a perfect the release has one show it flows just perfectly there's just a lot of things about that release that just it's got a, I, the robert hunters on it i think the mission in rain the, the midnight moonlight there's a couple songs on there that though they don't have quite the sort of awesome boogie on jam or the take leave your hat on jam that this one has the consistency of the consistency of that show is a little bit stronger I will say that uh, one and two, the ones that are ranked one and two, or one and three, not two, which is three, um, have quite a bit of a gap between them and, and number volume two, which is ranked number three. That's a pretty much average Jerry show, which is good with some highlights. These two are great Jerry shows with some highlights. One and three, or what is one and two? It's gonna get easier once we have more. But yeah, those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you check this out, if you listen to it, things I miss, things, whatever. You know how things work. Subscribe, like, share, comment, and go listen to this. Legion of Mary, man. Volumes 3, Gar Garcia Live. This is some really, really good improvisation. Jazzy rock, Jerry Garcia style. Yeah, go check this out. Peace. Talk to you later.